Hey, Chris Lipe here. I have greatly enjoyed my journey with One OK Rock and Taka's vocals. An incredible singer. So many colors and dynamics. But many of you have mentioned that I haven't done an analysis on any of his heavier vocals, which is a whole other aspect I have yet to explore with Taka. This live performance of Deeper Deeper was at the very top of the recommendation list from all of you. Let's dive in. I gotta hear that again. Oh yeah. I'll talk more about that, but I want to get a a fuller picture of what he's doing with his grip before I break down that first little scream. Incredible sounding though. Wonderful texture. Okay, let's talk about this verse and the different approaches he's using to access his grit. And what's so cool already, and I love this when singers do it, is that he's bouncing all around to different sounds and different placements. Even in this section we've listened to so far, he's not locked into any one sound. Another step up, it's take it, take it, take it, take your mind. Another step up, another step up, get it clean first. Notice how he goes down in apparent pitch there. Another step up! Ah, ah. This is a glorified mini sigh. Another step up! Ah. I'm gonna exaggerate this stuff because they help us understand how we can get there with our voices. Another step up! Another step up! He both decreases in pitch and at the same time increasing intensity through compression. Another step up! Another step up! But then, he goes another direction with the next line. Notice there's a lot of pitch there and there's almost this like, it's almost a squeal scream. It's not incredibly juicy. It's taking, 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 taking long. No. Another step up. Yes. Taking, 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 taking long. There's almost this abandon that happens. It's not quite what I did there, but if we combine this idea of compressing into a sigh, taking another step up, another step up, another step up, another step up, like that, and then we push upward and abandon into some arbitrary high space, but collide with our vocal break. It's taking, 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 taking long! Taking, 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 taking long! Taking, 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 taking long, long, long! We get that, which is a lot closer to what he's doing there. Now we also have to understand that Taka has a very high disposition. He's a tenor, much like Chester Bennington. He's got that very high tenor choir boy disposition about his voice. So anything that you do, if you are a baritone or a lower naturally pitched voice, is going to sound different, beefier, juicier, even if you're using similar techniques. If you'd like help experimenting with and exploring your voice in the way that I'm unpacking here so that you can get some of these types of sounds, click the link below and join my free voice course. And I'll help you not only get the fundamentals down with your voice, but explore all the crazy things you can do with it. Oh, that was an even better example there of that abandon into that high sort of squeal false chord. <laughs> taking long, taking long, taking long. But notice also he sets you up for this with the little squeaks he's doing into his head voice. He's so incredibly free with his voice. It's taken, 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 take your mind. Oh, it's, taken. it's getting, 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 getting. It's getting. 
getting, getting, it's getting, 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 it's getting, not, it's getting, it's, it's getting. He's going in and out of lots of different breath pressure combinations. Just, uh, just, uh, this stuff is so key. We can't just look at, oh, listen to that grit. We have to listen to all the other contrasts he's creating because this helps him get to that point where he can be freely and untension filled, gritty and aggressive. Oh yeah. Okay, let's go back and listen to this chorus again. Listen on that dim, dim, dim the lights low. How he backs off of his breath pressure. The lights low, the lights low. Dim, 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 the lights low. He is absolutely not doing this. Dim, 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 the lights low. Uh, keeping that same posture that he had higher as he goes lower. He is giving his voice, his body, and his musical mind everything in sequence, right? He's loud, he's quiet. He's head voice and soft, even in these moments where it looks like and sounds like for the most part that he's aggressive and up in energy with his voice. There's so much going on in this full range of contrasts. This is one reason why we love his voice. And it's also one reason why he's able to do so much with it, because he's always doing so much with it, even when you think he's not doing so much with it. <laughs> Lots of cool compression there. Not mighty story. Not trying to reach those notes, but instead pursuing them with this, really starting with head voice, even though this is an upper belted note for him in chest voice. Mighty, mighty. Add compression. Lift something heavy like I've talked about before. Mighty, mighty, mighty story. Yeah. And then you add this, this depth to your upper chest through compression in a note that would otherwise, possibly for a lot of people, be head voice. And then it's also creating grit through that compression. One other thing there, sorry for stopping so much, but listen on story. There's a little crack. Story! There's a little tiny chirp at the beginning there. If we shy away from cracks, him being okay when those things happen while he's practicing is going to make when they happen live easier to deal with and navigate through. Because this is bound to happen when you're dialing in your compression. Ah, now listen to the difference between the all right and then what he, and that scream afterward. All right! All right! Good compressed upper chest for him. For me, that's more of a mix, but you clearly hear distorted actual pitch, even though he's not singing a note. Then he goes to this other technique. La la la, 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 la right? That's not vocal cords, that's not pitch. There's no pitch in there at all. That's a voiceless sound. 
And it's amazing that he's pulling all these techniques out so freely. It takes a while to be able to do this. But we can start to get there with our voiceless, higher timbre screams like this, with this sound. Stick your tongue out. The key is at the very end of what I just did. At the beginning, and then there's that little gag sound when, as my tongue comes out. If I can start to lean in to the sensation of simply throwing the engagement of my voice upward into the highest area of my throat and then lean into that little juiciness that happens at the very end of that sound. And then shape it with my mouth. We have the beginnings of what he's doing with that scream. Mohai, Mohai. Listen to the massive transfer in placement he has right there. That's interesting and awesome. Not to mention the little crack that happened there. It's more of a sigh, a mini sigh that happened there. So much articulation packed into that one little phrase. That's a cool sound. Him, him and his upper chest, lower mix there with that nice compressed grit. And notice how arbitrary it is in terms of, of pitch. He's more just talking with the audience. You can see it in his interaction as well. You know, says something and then gives the mic to the audience and then you know, back and forth. Paying attention to these moments in a live performance is even more valuable than considering what notes they're singing because it shows you how audience interaction, a, a devotion to being in the moment and being with the other people that you are with in your mind, this frees you up in all sorts of ways that focusing on proper vocal technique is not going to help you with. Beautiful tone on that note. Those are real clean. That's really cool. And it's it's definitely a chest note. You can see it in his face. You can see that he's he's pushing up to that note. He's not landing on top of that note. And you can hear it in the pitch. It sounds great. And it's a particular way that he's going for that note. I believe that he's being very intentional with that. It could be hey! like that. But that has this sense of almost too floaty he wants it to be more an approach from below and yeah there might be a little bit of you could call it strain but in this case it's good strain we're not always supposed to be completely tension free and free of all strain otherwise there wouldn't be that that pain and grittiness and and uh and mess that we love so much in vocal performances the key is that he's not always living there he can save these moments where he's really going for something he can save those moments 
for key parts of the performance. gotta hear that a couple more times it is very chester bennington and if it is very chester bennington which it is we have to assume that this is not a voiceless scream in other words it has the same overtones it's using the same sorts of constriction that the voiceless scream that short thing i showed you earlier was using the that sound but there's a level of intensity here and there's, I think, I'm going to have to listen to it a couple more times. There's this pitch basis to this scream that because he's a high tenor and heavily influenced by Chester Bennington, I'm almost positive is there. Let me listen a couple more times and then let me unpack it for you. The key, I think, is at the very end. You hear that that pitch become more prominent there. This is hard to hear because it's it's live, and because there's those background vocals happening, uh, and it's it's buried in in some effects. Okay, and another giveaway here is. And this is un- also very Chester. Listen to how he gets into it. E e e e. He starts on the e vowel, e and then lengthens e like that. Yeah, and you hear his his primary chords happen at the very end of that scream very prominently. Okay, one more time, and then I'm going to throw some sounds at you. If this was just that e that sort of sound, it doesn't have the imprint of my voice because there is no voice in there. That's purely an upper constricted voiceless sound, which we heard earlier. But here we've got, if you listen to the way he gets into it with the E vowel and then you listen to the very end of it, I believe that this is a pitch scream. The same technique that Chester uses on songs like Given Up and many other ones. But because he's got a higher voice like Chester, it cuts more like someone doing a voiceless scream, especially if you're not listening all that closely. This pitch scream assumes that his primary vocal cords are still engaged to some extent while he's delivering that false chord engagement or that upper constricted engagement. And these types of screams tend to sound very different depending on the actual singer's real voice. Listen to Audio Slave Chris Cornell on Cochise. And then listen to Chester Bennington on Given Up. Those are the same basic techniques. However, they sound very different because Cornell's got a much more baritone voice and Chester Bennington's got a very tenor sounding voice. I'm going to use that as my pitch basis. It's slightly lower than what he's doing. But it's in the key of the song. 
Then I'm going to push up to that to that note in my chest voice until my chest voice breaks. I'm nowhere close. It's okay. That's what I'm going for. Now, as I feel my voice break, I'm going to add lots of compression, and I'm going to start with the E vowel. And I'm going to brighten, open my mouth quite a bit, just like Taka's doing. You could hear that the timbre widened and went higher even as I pushed the pitch higher. And as I added more compression to that instant where my vocal break started happening, I was able to harness the power of the upper constricted areas of my throat, false chords, the arytenoid cartilage, while still leaving a little bit of my primary chords engaged. Ah! Yeah! You still hear a little bit of that pitch back there. Okay, listen to how he came out of that last phrase. Some way. Ah, there's this letdown, this sigh. You hear him doing that so much, but prominently there. This is a wonderful way to give the beginning of a note or phrase lots of weight and then release yourself out of it so that you can get back into more energy in the next phrase. It's way more effective than way and then stopping and going right back. Way. That right there increases your mileage that you get out of your voice like crazy, super handy in live performances especially. Listening to that again. Just love the build up there. The yeah! And then there's that grit at the end of that. Did you hear that? See, that one is a, it's a little more exposed than the other one in terms of the, the different layers of, of what's going on in his voice. Let me listen to that a couple more times. Leave comments below. Tell me what you think he's doing. Point me to other videos that could help me unpack his scream 
further and in a better way. Thank you so much for suggesting this video. I've got more digging to do. Again, if you would like more help playing with your voice in ways that will unlock these types of sounds in your own voice, click that link below and join my free course. We'll see you for more.